Hello guys, and welcome back to another video. Today, I will be telling you what you would need to do to create a fully sentient AI. Firstly, you must know what a sentient AI is. In order to be sentient, the AI needs to be able to think for itself. It cannot run on any code that directly tells it what to think. All the code can tell the AI is how to create, connect, and stimulate neurons. The code cannot tell the AI what to do based, the AI has to decide that itself through its senses. So how can we achieve this? Well, the AI would first need to be able to see and hear things. If we ran the AI in a simulation, this could be easily done through ray tracing and proximity audio. The AI would also need to have a body in order to interact with objects and further enrich its senses. At bare minimum, the body should have arms of some sort which can change the position of other objects. And finally, when the AI starts out, it will know nothing, so make the AI move around randomly to initiate the learning process. So now that you know what the AI would need to do, I will tell you how it thinks. Here is the diagram of how the AI's brain works. Here is the color key. So as you can tell, the AI's brain is split into two sections, the short-term, and the long-term memory. The short-term memory is more like a processor that takes long-term memories and decides what to do with them. It first attempts to find a long-term memory with matching senses and movements. If there aren't any matching memories, then it will find a neuron with just a matching feeling or movement. The reason for this is your feelings and movements can change, but your vision and sight cannot. If this also fails, then a neuron cluster with all five neuron types will be created. Also, each time a neuron cluster is created, it will also create a neuron for the time of creation. Anyways, if there initially was a neuron cluster with all five matching senses, then it continues searching for other matches that are also linked to other clusters with a high comfort level, until it finds the best one. If it cannot find links which change the comfort level, it will ignore this line of thought and reset the short-term memory process. If every single link leads to a lower comfort level, then it will find another neuron cluster describing a similar situation, then link it to the current neuron cluster, then repeat the whole process. This makes it so the AI can learn to escape a situation like this. However, if this was the AI's first time, and it failed to find another similar situation, then it will attempt to retrace its steps by finding the latest high comfort neuron cluster. The AI links this cluster to the current one, then restarts the thought process. Once the AI finally finds a neuron pathway that leads to high comfort, it will change its feelings arm, or body movement to match the neuron information. It will also add additional links to all the neurons referenced on the neural pathway it took. The AI constantly repeats the short-term memory process to ensure every moment is captured, though it will only create new neurons when the sight, vision, or feelings change. This may sound a bit confusing, so I will give examples. Let's say the AI sees a thick rectangle on the ground while it is stationary and hears, feels nothing. It then remembers a past time where it had walked onto this thick rectangle and experienced high comfort. So, the AI changes its body movements to forwards, and goes onto the bed, where it receives comfort. It then relinks the neurons to tell it to go forwards, making it so that next time, the AI is even more likely to make that decision. Ok, now let's say the AI moved its body forwards into an enclosure of spikes with creepy music playing. The AI has never seen spikes or heard creepy music, so it creates a neuron cluster about this, and also includes the fact that it was moving forwards. Like as I said in the beginning of the video, the AI will proceed to move around randomly, until it touches the wall. Then, it will experience low comfort and create a new neuron cluster linked to the spikes and creepy music. Now, every time the AI sees the spikes and hears the music, it will be linked to low comfort. Let's assume that the AI has no positive association to the exit of this spike enclosure. The AI has never been in a situation like this, and it is uncertain if the AI will feel better after leaving the spike enclosure. 
so the only thing it can do is backtrack. So, the AI creates a new link, moving its body backwards to seeing spikes and hearing creepy music. It then does this process, and gains comfort. So now, the AI can decide for itself, but so can an insect. And we wouldn't consider an insect fully sentient. The most important part of being sentient is knowing language. Language allows us to form very complex neural pathways due to the hundreds of thousands of words in them. So to teach the AI language, make sure to show the AI the object, play a recording of the object's name being spoken, an image of the name spelled out, and something the AI associates with high comfort. If you repeat this process millions of times, the AI will eventually learn language. Also, make sure to train the AI in thousands of daily life situations. Then, your AI can finally be considered sentient. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and bye.